when we interpret bar charts, we want to talk about two different characteristics. We want to talk about mode and variability. Both of these concepts are in some ways similar to some of the characteristics we talked about with histograms. So mode is similar to the idea of center and variability is similar to the idea of spread. There will be some differences, but you can keep those kind of uh, those ideas in mind. One thing we won't be talking about with bar charts is the idea of shape. So as we saw in the examples on the first page, we can choose to order our bars in any order that we want, ascending, descending, chronologically. So since we can manipulate that graph to any kind of shape that we want almost, um, shape is something that becomes irrelevant. So since we can use any shape or any ordering, um, shape is just something that doesn't have a lot of meaning for bar charts. So what do we mean when we say mode? Mode is the category with the highest number of counts. We could have more than one mode as long as two bars are almost exactly the same height or exactly the same height or if three, four bars. So we're looking for the category or categories with the largest count. We can have multiple categories as long as they all have almost identical counts. Variability can be a little bit trickier to understand. It's a little bit less intuitive maybe. So variability can be low if one or very few categories have most of the counts. So that is one category or a few categories have very, very high counts and all the other categories are relatively low. Or we can have high variability which means that the counts are evenly distributed. And I put that evenly in quotation marks because it doesn't have to be exactly even, but what we're saying is that the counts are more or less distributed across all of the different categories. So there's no one category that has all of the counts, no one category that has almost no counts we have something where each category is sort of equally represented. So now let's use those ideas, um, mode and variability, to provide some interpretation for each of these graphs above. The first is the same one that we saw on the first page, annual box office revenue for R-rated movies. So let's start with that graph. We can first start by talking about the mode. In this case, the mode for this data occurred in 2003 and 2012 because that's where we see the two tallest bars. They're not exactly the same but they're both very very close so we can consider both of those to be the modes. These years saw the largest revenue for R-rated movies. So when we identify those two categories as the mode, that's what it means. Those are the years that, in this case, the most revenue was earned. In terms of variability, we could say that in this graph, the variability is high, meaning each year saw relatively similar revenues. So in this case, while there are some differences, each of the categories has about the same number of counts. We're all a little bit less than two or a little bit over two and a half. So they're all kind of in that same range, not exactly the same height, but relatively similar. We'll see some different um, interpretations when we look at ghost sightings per month for 2012 in the United States. In this case, we would say that our center or the mode occurred in August of 2012. And what we mean by that is that this is when 
the most ghosts. Oh, sorry for just a second here. The most ghosts were sighted in 2012. So we identify the mode just as, again, the tallest bar in our chart. And in the context of the data, that means that was the year that the most ghost sightings occurred, or the month in 2012 where the most ghost sightings occurred. In this case, we could say that the variability is low. Because far more sightings occurred in August than in any other month. And several months had relatively low numbers of sightings. So what we're saying is in August, we have this large peak, a very high number of sightings. And then most of the other months, the values just aren't as evenly distributed across all of these. We have some that are relatively low, others that are somewhere in the middle. So it's not that there's no variability, but compared to a graph like in the first example here, the variability is quite a bit lower. We have bars of very differing heights.